All right, boys and girls, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Ludix Aviation. Just before we get into this one, just wanted to make a quick announcement. This year, again, for the second year in a row, Flying Eyes are taking me up to Oshkosh. Everybody stay calm. Uh, I didn't tell anyone about it, but there was a competition between the brand ambassadors for Flying Eyes. And whoever's discount code was used the most in a certain time period was going to get to go to Oshkosh. And for the second year in a row, you people using my discount code have allowed me to go to Oshkosh. So thank you very much for using my discount code whoever did if you're in the market for some flying eyes sunglasses you got head pain using different sunglasses flying eyes is the way to go use my discount code ludix the link's in the description but i'm going to be at oshkosh uh, july 29th 30th and 31st i'll be doing meet and greets at the flying eyes booth number 422 come and see me if you want we can pick out some flying eyes together we can chat about aviation i love to interact with the people that enjoy what i do so if you're going to be at oshkosh let me know in the comments if you want to come and say hello so anyway that's the announcement done thanks to flying eyes Thanks to you all for using my code. Let's go and bust some myths. Busy international airports. The hustle and bustle with big aircraft. We don't want you general aviation scum here. But no, stop the drama. Because it's not as difficult as you might think to go into a busier airport. Sanford International is an international airport that is designated as a class Charlie airport here in Florida. One of the busiest airports that Florida has to offer. I've had many people come to me, student pilots, private pilots, and people with significant piloting experience, and ask me to fly with them to Sanford in particular to be able to get some experience flying into a class Charlie airport. They think it's inaccessible. I'm here today to prove that it's not. It's a myth, and we're gonna bust that myth. Sanford International lies just over 21 miles from Orlando's main airport, Orlando International, and is served by airlines like Swoop, Flair, Sun Country, and its main resident, Allegiant. In 2021, the airport saw nearly 2.4 million passengers pass through those tired terminals. And a fun fact, I would sometimes come to the US on holiday through Sanford when airlines like Travel City Direct used to fly in there. So on the face of it, to some, it may seem like you should stay away from such a busy Class Charlie airport like this but how wrong you would be. At this particular airport, there are even VFR arrival procedures set up to assist in getting general aviation traffic into the airport. And that is exactly what we're gonna fly today. The arrivals in question are the Monroe and Jessup arrivals. It's even shown on the sectional chart with these magenta arrows. But just how easy is it to fly these arrivals? Let's go and find out. Good, that's good, that goes, that's level. Cool, instrument check complete. So obviously going into a class Charlie airport, serviced by a radar approach control, you have to be on with the squawk code. We all know this. Luckily for me, here at Executive, they offer flight following from the ground, so you can contact ground control and they'll uh, set up flight following for you. So I'm going to do that today, but of course that doesn't preclude you from other situations like just, you know, calling the, the approach controller from the sky. You can absolutely do that and request uh, a landing at a uh, class Charlie airport. The minimum uh, rating for a pilot to go into a class Charlie is, is of course student pilot certificate and I can tell you especially in the Florida area Daytona is a class Charlie Sanford's a class Charlie you got so much student activity at these places and exactly ground Skyhawk 670 Mike Alpha we're up for, at uh, Romeo 4 with Papa requesting taxi uh, like flight following to Sanford at uh, 2000 670 Mike Alpha, runway 7 Alpha, 7 Taxi Back to Alpha, crossing 13. So, what he's doing there, he knows that I want to do flight following. And uh, he gave me the taxi clearance, so he's going to give me a, a squawk code once he's received it. I, it's really straightforward. It is intimidating because, you know, it's, it's a bigger airport, bigger aircraft going in and out there. But the procedures to get in are actually really simple. And the, the VFR procedure that we're going to fly today is a visual arrival into Sanford. Taxi zero Mike Alpha, remain out Bravo airspace, departure frequency 119.77, squawk 3407. 3407, uh, oh, it's that way. 3407 outside of the uh, Bravo, that's at uh, 119 for zero Mike Alpha. Zero Mike Alpha, read back right. Ta-da. Main concern for us today is you got York Cam. I don't know how that's going to work because when I do that, you're going to be looking at my knee, but, uh... I shouldn't really be having to go full deflection in flight. If I do, then that's uh, a whole other issue. But uh, yeah, it's the first appearance of York Camp. Don't know how, don't know how it's going to go, but we'll see. Switch it over to tower. Now, just before I go, we're going to put 1977 on standby. This is a big thing as well, setting up your frequencies. This is a, a massive thing to do ahead of time because this really relieves your workload in uh, in flight. 
Cheers, Niner Delta Whiskey. Contact Rolando Departure. Say fly. It is 125975. So we'll set that up on standby. Uh, I'm not going to need that. So I can set up on standby as well the control to 120.3. So all my frequencies now are set up at Sanford. And uh, Orlando Executive Tower. Skyhawk 670 Mike Alpha. Only short runway 7 Alpha 7. Can you put me on the ready side of the board, please? Skyhawk Zero Mike Alpha, certainly, sir. And uh, runway 7 is clear for immediate takeoff. Traffic, a two mile left base. Clear for immediate takeoff. Runway 7 Alpha 7, 670 Mike Alpha. Good morning, Murph. Good morning, Lewis. Runway 7 is confirmed. Let's see if the heading agrees. Oh, the heading agrees. Heels to the floor. We're rolling. See you later. Slight wind off the left. Which sends York Cam out of the uh, out of the mix. But here we go. Center line, airspeed's alive, everything's green, we're looking good. We're good to take off. 60, rotate. Welcome to the sky. Let's go to Sanford fly this arrival. Scout Zero Mike Alpha, remain outside the Bravo airspace. Contact Orlando departure. We'll see you on the way back, Ludix. All right, so I'm, I've got to stay outside the Bravo. The Bravo airspace here starts at 1,600 feet, so I'm going to 13. 1,111, Zero Strike 4, 2511. Line of departure, Sky 670, Mike Alpha, 1,000 uh, feet, just off exit. Exact 670, Mike Alpha, land of departure, ident, maintain VFR below the Bravo. VFR below the Bravo and ident, so 670, Mike Alpha. Zero Mike Alpha, radar contact, mile northeast of the Sanford Airport. Do you just want, or mile northeast of the Executive Airport. Did you just want to adjust the arrival? Yeah, just uh, adjust the arrival to a touch and go to Sanford and then back to Executive for 670, Mike Alpha. Mike Alpha, Rogers, maintain for your borough navigation on the Jessup, but just let the tower know that you just want to do one touch and go and go back out. All right, Roger, we'll uh, wait for your call for the switch over there, Mike Alpha, continue on the Jessup. 5542, traffic 11 o'clock, less than a mile south, but about 2100, indicated type on We got the arrival. Simple as that. Obviously, they know we're coming over to Sanford, I, I got a flight falling on the ground, but the earliest you can let them know what your intentions are, the better. That's going to give them time to plan. Just like we, as pilots, we need to plan out what we're going to do. The approach controllers need to plan out what they're going to do as well. So the earliest you can tell them. And uh, we got in there early. Uh, he's, he's told us to go and do it. So it's as simple as that. Now, the approach, uh, sorry, the arrival procedure calls for 1,500 feet uh, over the lake, which we're, we're heading direct to the lake now. Uh, that's about five miles to the south of Sanford. You go in towards the midfield area at 1,500 feet, wait for a call for a descent down to pattern altitude, and then enter the traffic pattern, just like that. Simple as that. So you're going in and then either on the downwind for whichever runway you go into. Simple as that. And just like that, we're going into a busy Class Charlie airport. No problem whatsoever. On it like a come off, taxi like a come off. Uh, just double check that with the checklist. Mixture. I've got Sanford in sight over there. We're just leaving a 1600 foot Bravo airspace shelf going into a 2000 foot shelf, so we're nowhere near the Bravo anymore. However, I want to stay at 1500 feet to stay at the approach, uh, sorry, at the arrival altitude. Keep calling it approach, it's not approach, it's an arrival. So, it says on the uh, arrival to look at the uh, south side of the lake uh, where the bridge is. So I've got Zero Mike Alpha, contact Stanford Tower on 120.3, good day. 120.3, thanks, Zero Mike Alpha. And uh, Sanford Tower, Skyhawk 670 Mike Alpha, 1,500 feet just south of uh, Lake Jessup on the Jessup arrival. 670 Mike Alpha, roger, continue Jessup arrival. Continue the Jessup, Zero Mike Alpha. So now I'm setting up on the Jessup to go direct to the, actually the north runway, basically. I've got a runway ahead of me. Continue Monroe. And Bucky 544 from now on, where you're told right side, we do expect you to line up behind company and not block the exits. Big gulp. Just want to point out the intimidation factor completely went away. How simple was that to be on with the approach controller? I was on with the approach controller for all of what, five minutes? So here we go. This is Lake Jessup here. Bucky 315, flighting 310, contact line of departure, have a good flight. 1500 feet. I'm actually going to configure for landing. Got mixture rich, landing light, taxi light, we can come on, nav strobes, all of that sort of stuff. This is on that. To approach briefing, we're going to do either left uh, downwind or right downwind for one of these runways. We'll see what we get given. We're at 1500 feet at the moment on the arrival. Allegiant 2297, fly heading 280, runway 27 right, clear for takeoff. Allegiant. Allegiant, clear for takeoff 27 right, Allegiant 2297. 
Number 670 Mike Alpha, traffic at 12 o'clock and 2 miles Cessna on the downwind 900. I right, look at the traffic, 670 Mike Alpha. All right, 900 feet ahead of me. Lucky 542, overfly runway 18, southbound at 1,500. Number 670, Mike Alpha, descend to pattern altitude. Pattern altitude, zero, Mike Alpha. Still not got eyes on that traffic, but uh, we descend to pattern altitude. He gave us that just in time for this little cloud here as well. Uh, traffic's in sight now, zero, Mike Alpha. Number zero, Mike Alpha, follow the Cessna, runway 27 left, clear for the option. Follow the Cessna and uh, 27 left, clear for the option, zero, Mike Alpha. Number two, Foxtrot Tango, flighting 260. So I've got my runway right ahead of me. Number two, Foxtrot Tango, contact the line of departure, have a good flight. So this is from the south, from the north, there's another lake, Lake Monroe. They've got a Lake Monroe arrival, the Mon Monroe arrival. Same procedure. Basically going direct to the runways and then you get at 1500 feet and you get told which uh, downwind to join. And it's as simple as that. There's my runway. And we're going to do this. And just like that, we've entered the pattern at a class Charlie Airport with no pain whatsoever. So we're beaming the numbers 27 left. I have confirmed that is the correct runway. We're below 110. I went to reach down here then for the flaps for the Cherokee. We're not in the Cherokee. About 80 knots is what I'm looking for. All right, below 85, 20 degrees of flaps. Final is clear. We're going to keep it slow. I am a little bit high. I need to keep that descent. Lucky 541, caution, wake turbulence, flash departure was an Airbus 319. All right, drop it in. Lucky Let's get on that glide slow. There we go. Two whites, two reds. That's where I want to be. But now my eyes are on uh, my aiming point. My nose is on my aiming point. My speed is a little bit higher than I want it. Well, 60, 65. It's right there, actually. Plane 2, Charlie Papa, thank you. Really we dropping a little bit, going to give myself a little bit of power. 60 knots, that's where I want it. I don't need to look at that anymore. My aiming point is the numbers. I don't need any more power. I've got plenty of airspeed. These things like to float. We know this. Bring it in. Here's the float. Tower, Mall 1895 Kilo is ready for takeoff. We'll take that. Mall 1895 Kilo. Tower, Roger. Hold short, runway 27 left. Traffic on Let's the roll. Uh, 55, 60, rotate, welcome back to the sky. Hi Sanford. 79. Zero, Mike Alpha, maintain VFR at or below 1,600, fly heading 260. 260, I'll be below 1,600 for 670, Mike Alpha. He's sent down, it's And the ready. only airline that's here today, it looks like, is Allegiant. But now he's going to sequence us out of the vicinity of the airport. He's going to hand us back off to the approach controller who is then going to help us get to Orlando Executive. And that's it. Boys and girls, that was simple. It seems more intimidating than it actually is, as long as you're on with their approach controller. You get everything said early, early, they'll get you in absolutely no problem. But for the people that think it's difficult to go into a busier airport, a Class Charlie airport, I think we can consider that myth well and truly busted. Thanks for watching. I'm going back to Orlando Executive now to do some landing practice. I've uh, not done it for a little while in a Cessna, so uh, if you want to go and watch that, please get yourself subscribed to Ludix Aviation so you don't miss it. Hit the notification bell, like the video if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you over at Exec for the landings.